Hi everybody, it's Mel here. I wanted to show you these amazing products from Cadence. I mean, up till about a week ago, when we're filming this end of August, I'd never used this rusty patina and I had a go and fell in love with it. And I'd like you to have a go and fall in love with it too, because it is super, super cool. And especially if you're into your mixed media and your journals and things like that, being able to make cogs and steampunk stuff with this is just phenomenal. So I'm going to show you where we're heading and then I'm going to show you how we get there. So this is, this was just a white molding that we did, that we had in the warehouse that we sell on our website, highlightcrafts.com. And this not only creates the look of rust, but it also gives you the texture because there's grit in it. It is brilliant. You can do it just with paint, but you don't get that texture. And when you've got something like this, people are going to want to come up and touch it like that. But it is super, super cool. So product wise, you're going to use the rusty patina. This is the brown. Okay, so I'll turn that over so you can see the colours better. Then we've got the yellow, oxide yellow. So you've got that one. And then we've got the mould green. I do, I do love that name, mould green. I mean, it's true. It is like mould green mould. It's the right colour, just not a very nice name. And then I've also got very vintage chic home decor wax, which is a water-based wax. And um, it's fabulous for bringing out or deepening or deepening down those crevices when you've done your rusty patina. So we're going to turn these over so that we can see what we're doing and then just unscrew this lid. There we are. So that's the rusty one, first of all. Now you can see, well, I don't know if you can see or not, but there is grit in it. It, it feel, if I just get my brush here, listen. Can you hear how it sounds? Sounds gritty because it is. Okay, and you don't need a lot of this. And um, we're going to just clean the end of that brush. Right, so we're going to use our stencil brushes again. And we will try and get these in stock for you. And all I'm going to do is work out of the lid. I tend to work out of the lid a lot because actually I don't need a lot of product. So I'm going to go in and this time I am really stippling this. So I'm giving, I'm literally pouncing like this, okay? I'm not doing this and sweeping it across. I want to get that texture into this. And this was super cool. And especially when you've never done something like this before, it's really exciting. Or even if you have, and you've been a little bit disappointed with the result, use Cadence. And I know we sell it, and I know, you know, you might be thinking, oh, she's just saying that because I sell it. Honestly, it is one of the most incredible brands that I've ever come across in my crafting life. And I've been doing this a long time. And there's been a lot of products that have come and gone. But Cadence, I have to say, I was super, super impressed with everything that they do, from their sponge that you can apply the paint with, which is phenomenal. The cut and use foam, you need to go and treat yourself to some of that because it is really good for applying paint. And, you know, right down to their uh, Mixion, which is their version of gilding, just everything, their one minute mirror spec, everything that they do is just brilliant because they use it themselves, you know? And when a, when a company, has crafters within it, people that use that product, you need it to be the best it can be because you're going to use it yourself. And it's not about you, it's about the customers. It's you guys at home. So we try and make sure that we bring you products that are just incredible. Right, so I'm just going to have a quick look at this from a different angle because I've missed a bit there. I can see it. And then I'm just going to lift this, this up. Now, this, this paint is water-based, okay? The best thing, I, I mean, I'm working on Mylar at the moment, but the best, what I would normally do is work on a glass mat. And it will, because you're going to dry this in between layers, it will want to bond to your glass mat. And the best thing that you can clean your mat with, if it's bonded on and it's dried on, is hand sanitizer. And I suspect we've still all got a lot of that at home. Um, and it's really good because it's alcohol based, it's solvent based. So the solvent will break down the bits inside. But because this is wet, I'm just going to move this out of the way and I'm just going to spritz this with some water. We're just out of a spray bottle. 
and then just wipe this up. So it already has that rusty look to it, but it's that's just the colour and the texture. What we want to do is make it look like, like it's properly rusty, that real rusty patina finish to it. Now, if you've got bits left on your glass mat or on your mylar, whatever you're working on, I use one of the scan and cut scrapers and literally just go over, just loosen that bit because remember it is, you know, a lot of the paints that we're using are hybrid. So they're going to want to stick to the surface that you're working on. But hand sanitizer is absolutely fabulous for it. Right, I've missed a little bit there and I can't bear that. So I'll have to go back in. Right, so the next thing we need to do is make sure that this is completely dry. Okay, so we're going to blast this off because otherwise when we come to put our next colour on, it's going to lift the paint. So you want to make sure that it's dry in between. You can use a hairdryer if you want to. Um, I use a heat gun because it's something that I have anyway for my stamping and all the other stuff that we do. You can't use a, ha a hairdryer when you're using embossing powders because it will just blow the powder off, it doesn't melt it. And I like to use a heat gun that has two different settings, one for drying and one for melting, because it gives me options within one tool. Right, I'm happy with that now, because that's nice and touch dry, okay? So the next color, I'm going to put in is oh the mold green there we go yeah oh lovely Andrew's in my ear who's producing this says if you want a, a chocolate brownie color stop there because actually it does it it looks redder actually in real life than it does but from that angle it does look like chocolate brownie you're right Andrew for once love you right right so now then this brush okay once looked like this brush, but me being me forgot to clean it and it went rock hard. So I chopped the top bits off. That's why I've got a flat bristle brush and a flat bristle brush is quite good for this. So I'm just going to tap some of this green mold out. Okay. And I'm going to make sure I've got a nice coverage right across that brush because I've cut it down. It's not perfectly flat. So I'm just making sure that that paint's going in and then hold it and then just go in and just dab. It's the lightest touch. Okay. Imagine you're putting talcum powder on a bit on a newborn baby and you're just rubbing it in and it's nice and gentle. It's the lightest of taps. This is when it's good if you can come and do classes with us in real life, as opposed to digitally because I can go around and show you how light you now you can feel it but just go in and angle your brush and just go in and add some of this in be very gentle with it be light with the touch okay because otherwise you're fighting to get that rust back then so we're just adding a little bit of detail into here and as somebody that doesn't do a lot of mixed media um Oh, David does a lot more than I do because he does it on a daily basis. It's, I think sometimes it's nice because I'm learning alongside at the same time that you're learning. And that's a really great way to teach because you learn the bit that you need to learn to do the bit that you want to do. And then you come back and you do the next bit. So if you're somebody that is brand new, it doesn't matter. I mean, literally, I had never done the rusty patina before last week, literally. I hadn't done it and I was like okay I'm not sure about this let's have a go and it's that fear it's just that letting go in fact if you come to our academy there's one of my favorite sentiments on the walls and it says to live a truly creative life we first must lose the fear of being wrong and you've just got to let go because if you don't like it you can paint over it it's that simple okay so I've got my mold green there and I'm now going to bring in my oxide yellow just make sure that you clean these properly. Try and keep the, the metal on top of it, but make sure that it's just cleaned down properly. And I haven't even gone into any of the tubs yet. I am literally just picking it up from the foil on the lid. So a little bit of this yellow. Now be really delicate with this, okay? Because it's quite a bright color. It's a bit like a sunflower yellow. And you're just gonna go in and add a bit more of this. And you'll get to this stage and you'll go, that doesn't look like rust. 
trust me, keep going. Okay, it's one of those things that you've just got to hold your nerve with and you've got to keep going. Get through that pain barrier and then it will look amazing at the end. But you do need to just go with it. I remember when we went over to Cadence to do the training academy with them. I mean, it was just a revelation for me because I wasn't a messy crafter at all. And just doing all these different effects and knowing, that, you know, just having a go. It's just a fabulous thing. And you know what? If you don't like it, then you don't do it again. But you will. If you're into this kind of stuff, I mean, imagine the front of a journal, maybe with a mould that you've made, you know, maybe one that you've bought or you've made yourself, that kind of thing. And just being able to make it. Oh, it just, it's just joyous. It really is a joy. Right, so I've got my yellow oxide on there now, so I'm not going to use any more of that. I'm going to go back in with what's left of my rust and very 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 lightly just so I'm not I'm not stippling now I'm doing it quickly I'm doing it slowly and I'm just going in and adding a little bit just here and there onto here where I've got a little bit too much yellow or it's too intense or it's too concentrated in one area I'm just going over and just picking up that excess so now it's starting to look a little bit more like rust. If I just lift this to the front, you'll be able to see there. You can see, so it looks quite rusty, but the next bit is phenomenal. So we're going to dry this first. <laughs> Having a lovely time. Oh, Andrew says it looks like a mouldy brownie. I'm not sure about that. I don't think there's ever been a brownie in my life that's had time to go mouldy, to be fair. <laughs> right, if I buy them in the supermarket, they've usually half of them has gone by the time I get home. Right, so I'm happy with this. Now, we're going to bring in this furniture wax. They do this in a clear, and they also do it in a black, and I think they do an espresso version of it as well. And all you're going to do is take a flat-ended brush like this, and... You're just going to pick up the smallest amount, and I mean the smallest amount. This will last you for a long, long time. I can't tell you exactly how long because I don't know how much you're going to use it, but a long time. And then what I'm going to do is use my brush upright like this, and I'm just going to go in and I'm going to just go into those little crevices. Now I'm just, I've got a little blob there. So put a little bit of water just from your spray bottle and a little bit of kitchen roll, tiny, tiny bit of kitchen roll, and then just dab it in. Cause it's water-based, you can wipe it off and you don't want too much. So even that, even that little tiny bit that I used was a little bit too much. And you're just gonna go in and use your brush quite vertically like this and go inside here as well and round the edges and you're just adding that touch of black and that makes it look old. It's a phenomenal product. You can also use this as a resist, this furniture wax. So you could put a layer of paint down and then go back in and use your wax over the top and then go in with another color and then sand it back and the wax will act as a resist again. So I've got a little bit of too much on there. So just go back to that tissue and just have a play because it is really rewarding. And just take your time and enjoy that process. You know, if you get to a stage where you think that absolutely does not look right, you've got choices. You can paint over it and start again. So just go back in with all your rust or just keep going through that barrier. Because honestly, that's the biggest hurdle, I think, personally, for somebody that's always been a clean crafter to go into more of a dark, grungy kind of mixed media. And mixed media does not have to be dark and grungy. It can be really pretty. All that mixed media means, and I think it put a lot of people off because it was called a, lot, called a lot mixed media art. And I think art put people off because if you're not arty, you know, if you can't draw and you don't paint, it can be a little bit daunting. But just trying something new is absolutely fabulous. And if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, you've learned a lesson. So either way, you one up on where you were before you tried. But I absolutely fell in love with it. But I also think, and this is crucial for me, my dad used to paint a lot. He was really, really good. And he always bought the best products that he could afford because that gave him the best result. 
and it's the same with this. And I have to say, you know, sometimes when you look at a product, you think the price should be a lot more and you look at it and you judge it by the price point. Cadence is incredibly competitively priced, but the quality of that product is just, for me personally, second to none. And I knew because Stephanie, our oh, lovely Stephanie, used to use a certain brand of paint for her um, paint imperfection. And she's used a lot of paint in interior design and, and all that kind of thing. And when we got on the plane to fly back from Turkey, I said to her, I love the chalky paint. I'm going to go and I'm going to buy that really famous one by that lady and see what the difference is. And she just said, don't waste your money because cadence is better. And I was like, OK, so that's coming from somebody that knows what they're talking about. So I'm just going to pull this forward now and you can see how that black has just picked up those undulations in here, those little areas that go in, that dip in, that would be weather beaten, where all the rains run and it's dried there and it's created that rust patina look. I mean, that for me, you, you would literally go up and touch it. And then when you touch it, you think, wow, that really is rusty, but it's paint. And remember, it started life that colour. So get yourself some pots of rusty patina, a little pot of the very vintage chic home decor wax in black, and have a play at making your rust effects. Thank you very much. All the products will be in the description below, so you'll be able to go and treat yourself to those. And let's see what you do and share with us on all our social media pages. Okay, I will see you very soon. Take care. Bye. If you want to see more from Highlight Crafts, make sure you click the like button. Subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to receive notifications of all our future content. You can also click here to see our latest video or click here to see more videos like this one.